Welcome to Introductory Physics video tutorial number four for Grade 11 New Physics. This is an introductory physics course, and this particular tutorial is about manipulating instantaneous velocity vectors to determine delta v and to ultimately determine the acceleration once you're given a delta t. So let's get started. Scenario number one is quite straightforward, quite simple. Both instantaneous velocity vectors are positive, and the object is accelerating to the east. In this case, it's simply going to be a car that's accelerating to the east over a given period of time. So you have a situation that resembles something like this. You'll notice that over time, we have the same distance between each vehicle, between the car, and that's simply representing the fact that it's uniform acceleration that for every second that goes by, for example, from here, let's call this T0 equals zero seconds and t1 equals 1.0 seconds. For this time interval, one second, the object is accelerating by a certain amount and it is accelerating by that amount every second. So we say it is uniform or constant acceleration. The velocity is increasing linearly. Now what we want to do in this particular situation is we want to set up a situation where we can draw our velocity vectors. So I've sort of done this here. I've represented the small car as being the initial velocity, which is smaller, and the larger car just representing the velocity that's bigger. Notice that the two velocity vectors are not the same size, but I haven't used an exact scale. I've simply made them uh, relatively proportional to one another. So let's get some data here. Let's call V1. I'll give it a value, a magnitude of uh, 6 meters per second with a direction to the east, the east being uh, to the right in this case. And let's give V2, the second velocity vector, a magnitude of, let's say, 26 meters per second. And that's also positive to the east. Now, what we want to do here is we want to set up a situation where we can solve this two ways. We can solve it using vectors and we can solve it using algebra. So I think what we'll do is we'll begin by solving it using mathematics or algebra. So let's begin. Uh, we're ultimately looking for delta v. Now there's, this is an easy setup because both are heading east and I think you can probably intuitively figure out what the change in velocity is. I want to show you a certain way of doing it uh, because that way that you're going to see will be able to be applied to more complex problems, uh, for example, in grade 12 physics next year. So we start off with our basic equation for the change in velocity, that's just delta V is equal to V2, take away minus V1. Now, and of course, another way of writing this expression is simply to add the opposite. And so in mathematics, of course, what we can do is we can simply take V2 and we can add it to negative v1. These two expressions mathematically are the same. So delta v is really equal to the sum of two vectors. And when we want to add vectors, we want to have them going in the same direction. That's the way we add them. And when we actually draw the vector diagrams, you'll find that it's much simpler to do it this way as well. That makes more sense. And actually both answers should end up being the same, of course. So let's begin. Uh, let's write at the uh, right-hand side of this particular expression. So v2 is 26 meters per second to the east and we're adding to that negative v1. Now the question becomes, well what is negative v1? In vectors, when you're dealing with the negative vector, what you're dealing with is simply the direction. In this case, negative v1, we'll flip this to the left right, this is negative v1. You'll notice the magnitude is exactly the same, it's still 6 meters per second, although in this case it's pointing out negative v1 and it's pointing to the west. So that vector is the opposite or inverse of this vector here. So in our expression mathematically we're just going to substitute in well what is negative v1? So in this case I can simply put plus 6 meters per second to the Less. That is negative v1. 
Well, you know the rules for adding vectors. You cannot oops, you cannot add vectors directly that have different directions. You must ensure they have the same direction. So we simply call this perfect unit per second to the east plus negative six meters per second to the east. And ultimately, when we do that math, we get an expression, or we get an answer for delta v, which is the vectors, the proportional vector symbol. Uh, we can now directly apply addition and subtraction, 26 meters per second east, minus 6 meters per second east, gives us finally 20 meters per second. So the change of velocity is directed to the east. In both cases, the vehicle is moving to the east. So our change of velocity is in fact to the east. And the change of velocity is simply the difference between the two numbers. And yes, you can directly subtract 6 meters per second east from 26 meters per second east and get 20 and get the same answer. There will be many situations, though, in more complex situations where you're going to want to add the opposite. So I'm simply showing you this method. It doesn't mean you have to do this method every time. So we end up with 20 meters per second to the east. That's the change in velocity vector. So over a certain period of time, which we haven't defined yet, the object changes speed by that much. If we go back to our scenario here to our car, we can choose a delta t period that we want to apply to this change in velocity to do the math to find the acceleration. So let's choose a delta t uh, well, I'll say two seconds. So it changes velocity by 20 meters per second over the course of two seconds. That's a rate of change, and that's exactly what acceleration is. It's the rate of change in velocity. Well, we previously determined our rate of change in velocity, our change in velocity was 20 meters per second east, and it took two seconds to do that, so our acceleration would be stated as 10 meters per second every second, and that is to the east. Now let's see what that looks like using just velocity vectors. So I'll put in my velocity vector for V1. V1 is originally 6 meters per second to the east, so perhaps I'm like that. And you recall the proper labeling for it, V1 is equal to 6 meters per second, and it's to the right or east. Alright, so that's the magnitude of the velocity, and this indicates its direction. Of course, our second velocity vector, V2, not drawn to scale, but maybe to be bigger, I not enough room there. V2 is also directed to the east, and the second velocity is 26 meters per second. So let's draw a velocity vector diagram that will demonstrate that we will in fact get 20 meters per second east. So once again, what we want to do with vectors is add vectors head to tail. In this case then, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have, and since we're dealing with delta V, delta V is a subtraction, the delta of course means to subtract the values. So what I have to do is I have to take my v1 and I make it into negative v1. So there's my negative v1, and I'll just write that label. Negative v1 is equal to negative 6 meters per second. Got to the left. All right, so there's my, there is my negative v1 vector. It's six meters, negative six meters to the west. Uh, check that, that's going to be instead just six meters per second to the west. It's easy to make that mistake to have the double negative. The west implies that it's moving to the left or negative. So we have negative v1 is six meters per second west, and v2 is 26 meters per second to the east. Now what we need to do is we need to simply add those vectors. So we want to add our vectors at the tail. Here is my V2, there is my V1, and you'll see that the vectors are in fact added at the tail.
find the resultant vector, that is to say, the delta V vector, it is simply the difference between these two vectors. Now the question that always gets raised or gets asked is, which way should the vector be directed? The change in velocity vector in this case. Which way should it be directed? To the right or to the left? So there's a couple of ways to think about this, but uh, the, the sort of way to think about it is, since the object is in fact moving at a slower rate to begin with, at just six meters per second, and later on its velocity was 26 meters per second, it must have changed its velocity in the positive direction. So the vector should be pointing towards the east. There's a sort of rule that you might want to uh, apply here, that the change in velocity vector will always be pointing in the direction of V2. So you'll notice that in this case, both are pointing to the, uh, to the right or to the east in a positive. If we label both of these vectors, we see that V2 is equal to 26 meters per second in the east, of course, and you see that V1 is 6 meters per second to the west. The delta V vector, then, is equal to the difference of those two, which is 20 meters per second to the east. And that conforms beautifully with what we had using mathematics, and here we're using vectors, and they agree with each other nicely. So the scenario might like this, might look like this. Let me just grab uh, the car here for a moment. I'll just uh, copy that move down here. And you can see it. So here's the car. Again, this scenario is relatively straightforward. It's just typically it's a matter of you're on the Queensway or you're on some highway and you are uh, going at a certain speed. That speed happens to be V1, which in this case you're moving at six meters per second. And later on, sometime down the road, you're now uh, moving at a faster velocity because you stepped on the accelerator and therefore you're going faster than that is 26 meters per second. And of course that took some time to do. So let's apply it by putting in the car uh, a couple times in a row here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, it's gaining speed. The acceleration is four meters per second, sorry, 10 meters per second every second. So if we have an acceleration of 10 meters per second every second, then after one second of time, the object will be moving 16 at a rate of 16 meters per second. So this could be V2, and where V1 was six meters per second. And in fact, we can put it here, we'll say, like so. And that time period was delta T is equal to one second. One second later, the object is now moving at 26 meters per second. So there's another change in time of one second for a total change in time of two seconds. So the object accelerated at a rate of 10 meters per second every second to the east, and it did so over a period of time of two seconds, and therefore its velocity went from 6 meters per second ultimately to 26 meters per second. I hope you found this to be useful. I will present another one of a different scenario where an object is accelerating in the positive direction, sorry, when the object has got a velocity in the positive direction, and later on its velocity is in the negative direction, so the velocity vectors are pointing in different directions.